Uh, welcome to new video and in this video we want to take a look at the uh, tips and tricks for the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II. The software has some specialties that you don't find on the Xperia 1 or the Xperia 1 Mark II or the Xperia 10, 10 Plus devices. So let's take a look at uh, some tips and tricks for the Xperia 10 Mark II. So let's start with tip number one, which is activating the gesture control for your Xperia 10 Mark II. And uh, this is pretty handy. As you can see here, I don't have the three navigation dots that you usually have for navigating in Android. So to do this, you go here in settings, you go down to system, you go into the gestures, and then you say system navigation, and here you can activate gesture navigation. The cool thing is you can also configure gesture navigation and make it a bit more sensitive depending on yeah, your hands basically. Uh, the default setting is pretty nice for me so I have this setting here to just go into multitasking view. If I want to go into my home screen and I'm well, let's see I'm here I want to go to my home screen just swipe up and if I want to go back in an application, just like in system settings, you can swipe back like this. So, uh, tip number one. Tip number two, color profile. Fix the white balance. So, uh, I talked about it in my review. You can go into your display settings and configure your white balance. And the default one is cool, as you can see here. But I don't like this cool one because it is a bit too cool for me. There's the warm one, which is a bit too warm, and then there's the medium one, which looks like this, which is uh, pretty okay, but I found that the custom value 150, 150, and 120 works best for me. So this is the one that I chose. Tip number three, slide on side menu for uh, going directly to multi-window mode. So you can see the side sense here, and I can activate it by double tapping on side sense. But if I don't want to have this double tap feature to just switch between apps, just like, for example, going to the Play Store, Play Store here, what I can do is simply swipe up here to directly go into multitasking view. And now when I press on a different application, just like, for example, Chrome, it will just simply put Chrome down here and put my Play Store up here. So pretty fast and easy way to I go into side sense mode. Then uh, the next thing is the configuration of side sense. So let's go into side sense and we go into the configuration down here. And here we have the option to configure side sense, make it bigger. First of all, we have the option to turn it off. So if you don't like it, you can turn it off. But what's very cool here is you can customize apps to be shown in SideSense. You can add apps that you want to be shown in SideSense all, all the time. Otherwise, it will populate the most frequent apps that you use. And of course, you have the option for the multi-window menu, uh, the pair setting. You can add a pair here. If you want to have a pair of two applications that you always open frequently, you can add them here manually if you'd like to. Then we have the side sense behavior. We can configure the side sense bar, which is pretty handy if you have problems activating the side sense feature. You can set the length of the bar. You can see here, I can make it shorter if I want to, or I can make it longer uh, for easy activation. And I have the option also to set the transparency to high, so it's almost invisible as you can see here, or low, so I know that it is there. So let me set it maybe a bit lower here. Uh, a bit higher here <laughs> and the position I can set the position as well so I can make it very high or very low hope you can see the side sense no. and of course I have the option to reset all the sliders if I want to and I have also the option to set where it should be shown by default it is set on the right side at least on my device I can say I only want it on the left side or I want it on both sides so on both sides would be give me side sense here and nah, here as well. So I can choose uh, whatever side I want to. I, and in general, it could be that one side might be working better for you than the other. So you can set it up. 
and you can disable side sense uh, temporarily this is uh, enabled by default i would also recommend this especially in games it could be very very uh, disturbing if you activate side sense <laughs> by accident or in videos so this is also very good we can go back here and we can have some other things like the sensitivity sensitivity of a side sense so double tap speed i can adjust the speed the default one i can make it slow or very slow so if i really want to make it like burn burn slow so let's check slow you can see slow it's like very slow and it's still detecting stuff which is pretty cool so i can set this up the way i want to especially if i have problems with side sense this was quick but if I want to want it to be slower, see it's still working. So this you can configure, and you can also uh, configure the uh, length of uh, the the slide default. You can make it long, or you can make it uh, short, which is the slide function here. This one. Um, and yeah these are some of the options you have here and you have of course also the option to configure the gestures so if you go to gestures here you can configure double tap to open slide up to open multi window uh, menu but if i don't want to i can do something else so if i don't want to i have the option to just say go to my home screen or go to the previous screen uh, or uh, something else as you can see i take a screenshot enable one-handed mode for sliding up or down something like this and here for example slide down means return to previous screen so if I slide down here it's just like a back gesture I don't need it really so what I can do is simply say okay I want to enable one-handed mode so if I enable this one handed mode here you can see I have now one-handed mode if I slide down pretty handy and pretty good feature so this is sight sense and how you can figure sight sense the uh, sensitivity the position and the slide gestures you can find a few other options here as well but i don't want to go through all of them then another cool feature is the possibility to go into your settings and set the double click function for the power button by default if i double click here it will try to open up google uh, assistant but I don't want to do this so what I do is I go to system and I go to gestures and here I have the option to say that I want to change the power key behavior so I click on this and what I can say is launch assistant app and this day, in this case it's Google or I can say launch camera and I think launch camera is far more interesting for my case because I want to sometimes launch the camera very quickly so what I can do now after setting this up is to go into the camera by pressing the power button two times. You can see it is asking for <laughs> which camera to open. So in this case I say always the normal camera, not the open camera. And then it opens up the camera and I can take a shot, which is pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, then when in the camera we have the option to set um certain things here that we want to set up on in the camera itself so if i go to camera configuration you can see i have object tracking here which i can enable which allows me to track an object let me show you this real quick so i have this this uh, remote control here and i say okay track this object and as you can see here as I move it around it is tracking this object pretty nicely it's a pretty handy feature especially for creating good shots why it is disabled I don't know because it is by default it won't do anything even, only if you click on an object it tries to see and track the object as you can see here so it's a pretty cool feature and too bad it is not enabled by default another thing that you can set up here in the settings is um, you can turn off the soft skin effect by default i think it is turned on i've turned it off here and you have the option to have a qr code reader directly built into the camera so if i have a qr code i can just simply point to this qr code uh, with the camera and it will start reading and you will open up the website or something like this so 
very handy feature uh, as well. Smile detection shutter is also uh, available here, so especially useful if you want to do selfies. Uh, you have the option to just say, okay, I want to have, what's the smile detection shutter? As we go back, go, let's go to selfie mode. Here you can see me recording with my Xperia 1. And uh, let's go into settings here. And uh, here we have auto capturing. And here we have the option to have to enable the smile shutter. So basically when you smile, it will take a photo of you. Otherwise you can use also the hand shutter, which is also pretty cool. So if I go back right now and use the hand now, uh, detected the hand now it takes a photo of me as you can see also a pretty nice feature especially if you want to take a selfie uh, but you are not able to grab your camera so also very nice um, then also pretty nice is let's go back here i showed it i told it told you about it as well as press and holding the shutter button will just take shots without focusing so if you set a focus point uh, here you can see it will track and I can take a photo and if I press and hold this button the shutter button it press multiple photos without refocusing on this object which is pretty handy for street photography the next tip is press uh, set, no, set the volume keys to act as a shutter button. So sometimes you don't have the option to press the shutter button here. And what you want to do is uh, set the volume keys to perform as shutter button. They are not two stage buttons, so you cannot emulate or simulate Xperia 1 in any f uh, form or shape, but you can set the volume keys to act as a shutter button. By default, they, I think, zoom and I have set it to shutter so what I can do now is use the same trick as before by just pressing the volume key here and this is very very fast then and much more efficient than, than trying to get something on the screen or hit something on the screen you can just simply uh, in street, street photography just simply run around like this holding your phone like this and then pressing the volume down button to take a shot and uh, yeah pretty nice feature indeed um, the next thing is uh, usb otg support so don't forget that the usb c port on the xperia 10 mark 2 has also otg support even it's uh, only even though it's only usb 2.0 it has otg support so transferring files might be a bit slower but you are able to do this you can simply also use USB sticks, disks to transfer files over if you want to or attach certain peripherals. Then uh, set the stamina mode to auto start. So in settings you saw my battery life and some were complaining eh, I don't get the same battery life as you do. Uh, this could be due to the battery stamina mode not being enabled when you enter 20%. So as you can see here, I have a stamina mode enabled, turn on when uh, the battery level is uh, underneath a certain um, percentage. So I can set the schedule here, as you can see here, based on the percentage or no schedule. By default, I think there's no schedule set, so I send it to 20%, so if it falls um, under 20% the stamina mode will kick in and it will turn off automatically when the device is fully charged. This is what I would recommend you to do as um, tip, as another tip. Then enable DSEEHX for better audio via headphone jack. So the headphone jack on the top allows you to listen to music and uh, Sony has a proprietary technology that they hide under sound uh, audio settings which is called DSEEHX and this allows you to upscale basically music uh, compressed music so if you have a lot of compressed music this will improve the sound quality via the headphone jack so pretty nice feature this is disabled by default I don't know why enable it then the next thing is a smart lock so you have a smart lock feature that you can enable 
I think it is in security. Smart lock. You have to enter my super secret lock password. And it's a smart lock feature that we know from the good old days of Sony Xperia's on body detection. So what it will do is basically keep your device unlocked while it is on you. So if you have the device on you, it will detect that it is on you um, by motions and so on and uh, will keep the device unlocked. So if you don't want to unlock the device all the time, this might be very interesting feature. Uh, feature especially also trusted places. So if you're at home, for example, you can set the area to, uh, to trusted uh, places and uh, this allows you to uh, unlock the device automatically when you are in your trusted place. Of course, you have to have location services turned on for this. And trusted devices. So if trusted devices are near, just like, for example, I have my watch here, my, my smartwatch near, uh, then it could say, okay, I will then keep uh, being unlocked. You can set it up with different uh, trusted Bluetooth devices, just like, for example, a speaker, a smart speaker or something like this uh, when you're at home as well. So this is the smart lock feature, also very handy indeed. Encrypt SD cards is also a pretty nice feature. Encryption and credentials. There's the option to go into and then you have the option to encrypt the SD card. So I don't have an SD card right uh, here, but you could activate encryption of SD card, which will save all your, which will encrypt all your files. So it makes it harder for people who uh, just find your phone if you lose it uh, or try to steal your SD card to uh, do anything with it. Then a screen pinning is also an interesting feature that you can activate. And this allows you go into security again, screen pinning. This allows you to pin an app. As you can see here, screen pinning keeps the current app in view until you unpin it. And this is how to use it. Make sure your screen pinning is turned on. Show recent app list. Tap on the icon of the app that you want to pin and then tap pin. Let's turn it on. And it requires unlocking for unpinning. Okay, so I have to use my pin for unlocking. And let's say we have an app, we, we want to show someone a photo or something like this, or a specific website. Let's go here and show them a specific website, the Sony Xperia Reddit, uh, for example. And I go here, I click on the logo and can say, pin this app. So what now happens is you can give it to your friend, screen is pinned, okay. And the only thing that he can do, you can see there's no status bar. You cannot even see what notifications are there, what time it is. Uh, or something else. The only thing that he can do is simply, if he wants to go out of the app, he can see the clock maybe, but that's all. It is locked and the device is still locked. So what I have to do now is the, the friend cannot do anything with this. He has to use the fingerprint or unlock the device if he want to, wants to go out of the app. I can unlock the device and now I'm back in the game. So also pretty nice feature, screen pinning. And uh, then another feature, very handy, if you don't like animations or you want to have quicker animations on your device, even though the Xperia 10 Mark II is pretty snappy, uh, you have the option to go into accessibility and then you can simply say remove animations here. It will not remove every animation, but it makes it just a bit quicker. As you can see here, this is pretty quick. The Google feed will come in here pretty quick and uh, this will be the multitasking view will be very quick this animation is, is still in here and i didn't find a way to deactivate this but in general it is a lot quicker and snappier in reaction not as smooth with the animations because we turned them off but this might be also interesting for some people to get the device a bit quicker yeah, then we have something else like smart backlight control feature. Let's go back into settings for this and we go into system gestures and then we can find the smart backlight control. You can click on this. It will give you an explanation what it's doing. Basically, when it auto detects, if you're holding your Xperia in your hand, it will not turn off the display. Pretty useful, I think, especially useful if you're reading longer, longer text. And yeah, you're basically not scrolling on this text. Um, then it is a pretty useful feature. 
and yeah I can advise you to turn it on otherwise turn it off if you don't need it because otherwise like I'm holding it right now here so I want to turn it on because I want to show you something especially useful so if you want to show people something it will detect that you have it in your hand because there are small movements in your hand and the smartphone is uh, capable enough with all its sen sensors to detect that you are moving your hand so it can let the device turned on uh, the display turned on which is a pretty nice feature for presentations for example uh, if you do such a video like I'm doing it right now then the next feature is um, talking about smart a bit smart call handling uh, which is down here and what this will do as you can see here if you have your phone lying on the table for example and someone is calling you just take it grab it naturally and hold it to your ears and it will automatically um, take this call and answer, answer the call and if you want to reject someone you just <laughs> put the smartphone down like this and the phone will reject the call and uh, yeah uh, you can also shake the device if you have it in your hand and you see ah I don't want to talk with this one reject the call by shaking the device so this is also a pretty um, good feature also disabled by default but you can use it if you uh, get frequently calls and uh, then last uh, but not least reset options so you can go into your uh, system and reset options and here you have the option to reset all your options so if you just like me have you have a bit of trouble finding all the options of course you have the option always to search in the search for for the option that you're searching for but if you set up something wrong and you want to reset it you have the option to reset it reset all networking settings for example wi-fi mobile data and bluetooth will be reset especially useful if you have problems with Wi-Fi and the network mobile data or Bluetooth you can reset it here uh, app pref preferences this will disabled uh, this will restore disabled apps and uh, disabled apps notification oops I don't know what this was uh, disabled uh, app notifications will be enabled again and default applications for actions and background data restrictions for apps and any permission restrictions will be reset so if you have issues with some apps this might be pretty handy and if you want to i don't know sell the device or reset everything you have the option also to factor reset everything and re erase all data so this is pretty much everything for this video um, i pretty much covered all the tips and tricks available on this device but if you have still some very clever interesting tips for the sony xperia 10 mark 2 or 1 or 1 mark 2 doesn't really matter i think most of the features are available for all of those devices then just post it in the comments uh, otherwise give it a thumbs up a like and subscribe that's everything for this and until the next time bye <laughs>